but it's okay, Martha, whenever you're ready. Sorry, just happening, happily chatting away. Um, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I am Martha Hall Finley. I, as of tomorrow, the director of the School of Public Policy for three months. Um, so, <laughs> yes, um, uh, which is a pretty fantastic thing. And, um, well, we can talk a little bit more about what we do here. But first, I would like to do the land acknowledgement. The University of Calgary, located in the heart of southern Alberta, both acknowledges and pays tribute to the traditional territories of the peoples of Treaty 7, which include the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Tutina First Nation, and the Stony Nakoda. The city of Calgary, of course, is also home to Métis Nation, districts 5 and 6. Agriculture. Um, uh, so yeah, I've only been here for three months, almost uh, three months, um, and I think some people know that I've had a bit of a history in politics, certainly a lot of history in public policy, um, which is why I'm here. I actually tried to retire a year ago, and this is me having fun in my retirement because it just so happened there was a dream job. Um, so I'm so, so excited to be here. Um, but what a lot of people also don't know is that I spend a big chunk of my growing up um, on an apple farm in Ontario. And agriculture, not just having lived it, but um, is uh, just a really, really big part of my history and my enthusiasm for what we can do in this province and in this country in terms of the op opportunities for ag. So um, I just want to be able to say that uh, this is particularly fun for me and particularly exciting for all of us here to be able to celebrate this uh, incredible collaboration again with the government of Alberta. Um, John Simpson is not here. We were just bemoaning the fact that he is not. Um, it would be lovely to have him here and actually be able to say a few words. Simpson Center, of course, would not exist if it weren't for John Simpson. And so I also want to make sure that we have a really big shout out to John. I'll make sure that, you know, he at least knows that we did it, um, even though he's not here right now. Um, I uh, have the great pleasure of introducing the Minister of Agriculture and Irrigation. And one thing I would love to talk more about is the connection between agriculture and irrigation because you would know that University of Calgary uh, is an ex extraordinary place with respect to water. Um, it's the only UN, uh, President Macaulay, it's the only UN hub for water in the world, isn't that right? Pretty exciting. Um, and one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing at the School of Public Policy is actually doing more in the areas of both food, agri-food, and the connection to water. So your title is particularly apt. So Minister Sigurdsson uh, was sworn in as the Minister of Agriculture and Irrigation not too long ago, June 9th, 2023, not quite, not quite a year ago. Um, we're thrilled to have somebody with his experience in that role for all sorts of reasons, um, partly because he started an egg. He was telling me that this is a classic Alberta story. He started an ag farm north of Cochrane, then went into oil and gas. This is the Alberta story. Then went into business, then into entrepreneurship. Again, this is the Alberta theme. And uh, right back full circle into ag. And, uh, and so we're really, really excited about having you here, having you in this role in the government, and particularly excited about what we're able to announce today. So, over to you, Minister. Come on, come on! Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for that introduction. And uh, as well, I want to say thank you for the, to the Simpson Centre for hosting today. Um, I agree. There's a lot of excitement in agriculture in Alberta right now. It's a great time to be in agriculture in Alberta. Of course, it is one of Alberta's most important economic drivers and really is a lifeblood of many communities across our entire province. And our government is focused on growing agriculture and the industry as a whole, improving its productivity, competitiveness, and working on its sustainability. Now, digital uh, technologies like sensors Artificial intelligence and data analytics are showing promise in contributing to this focus 
However, this is new ground. And it's important that Alberta adopt these innovations in a considered strategic manner. And that's why I'm pleased to announce that the government of Alberta is providing the Simpson Centre at the University of Calgary with 1.2 million over three years to conduct policy research to better understand where the challenges and opportunities lie for the digitization of agriculture. Now the Simpson Centre will gather digital experts, farmers and ranchers and producers to facilitate discussions about these digital technologies and determine how they can be adopted more effectively. Among these folks are representatives from the Alberta Beef Producers and the United Farmers of Alberta, who I'd like to thank for taking up the cause and participating in this very exciting work. This funding will improve the understanding of digital technology and agriculture amongst producers and policy makers, which will help ensure that Alberta's adoption of these technologies is strategic and done in the most effective manner possible. Now when Premier Smith appointed me as Minister of Agriculture and Irrigation, she tasked me with supporting Alberta producers as they work tirelessly to feed our families here at home and families across the globe. And the funding today will support this work, helping our producers maintain their position as global leaders in innovation. I look forward to working with the Simpson Centre to develop ideas and inform government policy that helps producers adopt these technologies to increase production and improve food security. Agriculture has and always will be a huge part of Alberta's landscape, which is why our government will continue to look for ways to make this sector even more resilient, productive and competitive in the global space. Once again, Thank you to the Simpson Center. I look forward to continuing this work and I'd now like to welcome Dr. McCauley, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Calgary to say a few words. Thank you, Minister Secretson, and thank you for your government's ongoing confidence in and support of the University of Calgary. We all have, I think, uh, family and agriculture. My mother, all my uncles, many, many generations of uh, farmers in Ontario and Quebec. And I used to be conscripted every summer to work on the farm during particular times because that's when labor shortages are there and you get the kids from the city to come out and help, which is always an interesting experience. Um, so I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Donna Finley, one of our senators from the University of Calgary who is here. There are many distinguished guests in the audience, but Donna, thank you for coming out on a, early on a Monday morning. Really, really appreciate the Senate. Um, this is our downtown campus and it's home to the uh, University of Calgary School of Public Policy. And here at Canada's leading policy school, we drive meaningful debate and develop many of Canada's future policy leaders. They can be found in leadership positions across Canada, in the public sector, in the private sector, and not-for-profits, benefiting in particular from practical, focused policy research at which our school excels. With hands-on training in a variety of programs, like the Master of Public Policy program and the Master of Science in Sustainable Energy Development and the Extractive Resource Governance program. And today, we're focused, very fortunately, on the Simpson Centre. I'd like to give a big shout out to John Simpson for his support of the University of Calgary in general, but also of having the, the vision to ensure that agricultural policy is discussed here at the School of Public Policy through the Simpson Centre. And again, this is really important because we need a hub for research to guide policy making and decision making to make Alberta's essential agriculture industry more sustainable, which today, thanks to the support from the government of Alberta, is launching an agricultural digitalization program. Now, most of the people in the audience and some may wonder what agricultural dig digitalization is, why we need it and what are its potential benefits. After all, isn't agriculture really supposed to be simple? You plant, you grow, you harvest, but that's not what agriculture is today. And this ag and agriculture brings so many benefits, economic benefits to our province, and which can, can deliver even more by boosting productivity and enhancing reporting in the agri-food sector. And that's what digitalization can do. Thanks to ag tech innovation like robotics, AI, and smart devices, we have more data than ever 
about weather, land use, animal welfare, animal welfare, animal welfare. <laughs> very, very important. Minister Seekers and I were talking about that just before we got to the podium. Land use, uh, crop soil chemistry, and some interesting invasive plants that are coming. And these data we need to drive more effective decision making for producers, for supply chain actors, investors, as well as policymakers. And through the Simpson Center, we will raise awareness about the power of digitalization to boost productivity and enhance land and animal stewardship. We'll build capacity for data literacy and use, promote the value of adopting digital technologies, and assess what infrastructure is needed, such as bandwidth, particularly in rural communities, uh, to uh, have access throughout Alberta. And in addition to increased productivity, digitalization will also help us to reduce disease and lower emissions. The University of Calgary has many partnerships with the government of Alberta, ones that make Alberta healthier, more sustainable, and more prosperous. And we are privileged to add one more so our, so our agricultural sector can continue to develop and grow, producing the food the world needs and will need more of, and producing the jobs on which so many families and communities in Alberta depend. So thank you, Minister, for your faith and confidence in the University of Calgary and in the Simpson Centre and the School of Public Policy. And now I'd like to turn the podium back to Martha Hall Finley to celebrate her three-month anniversary. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And um, another just really big thank you, Minister. Um, the only way we can do what we do at the school, at the university, um, uh, is with the support of the government of Alberta, without question. And this is a huge vote of confidence in our ongoing ability to work in this really important space. So um, can I just ask just a really big round of applause and thanks for this incredible funding from the government of Alberta. <laughs> big shout out to President Macaulay too. Um, thank you for coming down. Thank you for coming to the downtown campus. We're, we're, it's so nice to see you down here. Um, but, uh, but you know, you're awfully pressed for time. We know that, an awful lot going on. So the fact that you're here and showing that vote of confidence for what we're doing at the school um, is, uh, is also in, uh, very, very welcome. Thank you very much. And lovely, nice words you said about the School of Public Policy. So thank you for that. Um, some of you might not realize this, but We've already been working with some of this money. <laughs> there was already a conference last week, and I had the, the privilege of, it, of coming in near the end and, and being able to listen to some of the things that there been, had been going on, all about the digitalization of the data involved in ag. And, um, and one of the things that I uh, was able to say was that when I you know, had been uh, some of those growing up years on an apple farm, um, you might be able to tell, but this was probably a really long time ago. And uh, technology was not a big thing then. It really was plant them, pick them, and um, and sometimes things were done too, with with too much. Like, you know, you'd, you'd, with chemicals, you'd just do mass spraying. You'd do all sorts of things because that was where we were in, the, in that stage in technology. The one, some of the most wonderful things about technology and digitalization of data is that we can be so much more precise in what we are doing in terms of the use of chemicals, in terms of irrigation. Why bother wasting water in places where we don't need it, right? So this is these actual, real, practical applications of the information and the science and the data um, are, are really, really quite incredible. So this is um, uh, of, of, of great help. Um, I can tell you that that conference last week was terrific. Um, it was, there was buzz, you know, listening to the people talking about some of the opportunities, some of the really extra, extraordinary things that are happening from a data, from a technical, from a technological um, point of view. I, I also want to just add 
Um, I've had this conversation a number of times. How do we get more young people involved in agriculture? Um, I spent a number of years in, in oil and gas as well, and that was a problem too. How do we get more young people involved in, in our energy sector here in Alberta? Because, you know, there's, there's some issues. Um, and there are some unfortunate perceptions. And one of the really great opportunities here is the technology. This stuff's really sexy. And so when you have that, that chance to have conversations with young people and students and talk about the technological things that are happening, the data, the, the you know, just the computer stuff. I just dated myself really badly. Um, but I'm, I'm quite serious about this. I'm excited for, for this industry. I'm excited for what we're doing here in this province. I'm really excited for what we're able to do here at the University and the School of Public Policy because this is an uh, industry of the past, but very, very much an industry of the future as well. And we're really, really excited to be a part of it. Um, I think at this point, after I say thank you to everyone, of course, Minister and the President, for um, uh, attending, I turn it over to Jesse. Thank you very much before Jesse gets on to the role. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. And again, Minister, thank you to the, you and the, your government. This is just extraordinary. So thank you very much. So we just have time for some media questions now. For any reporters in the room, we have a mic in the back, or we will just move to the phone lines. And I just ask any reporters to state their name and outlet, and we'll keep it to one question and one follow-up today. I don't think we have in the room, so to the phones we go. No one on the easy day. <laughs> that ends today's news conference. And if anyone does have questions, uh, all my information is on the bottom of the news release. And I just ask all the speakers if you could stay, and maybe we'll get a picture. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming.